Hello and welcome to Burning Issues, the only program that provides you a glimpse inside the Wichita Fire Department. I'm Fire Marshal Brad Crisp and in this episode we'll talk about fire safety during the holidays, winter safety tips, and commonly asked questions we field on the phone and on the web. The Wichita Fire Department has a long history of being proactive when it comes to fire safety. One of the many things we do is to provide information to callers who have a fire department related question. Residents can call our administrative offices daily, and they do, to ask questions about the range of topics from burning in the city to how to test their smoke alarms. We want to create raving fans, so our fire department staff treat each call as if it was a family member calling for advice. We also recognize people tend to spend more time indoors as the holidays approach and the weather gets colder. The more time we spend inside our homes and businesses, the more chances there are for something to go horribly wrong. During this time of year, we use space heaters, candles, fireplaces, and other heat producing devices. Care and prevention need to be taken to ensure our home is free of fire hazards, which could injure or worse yet, kill you or your loved ones. We also encourage our residents to prepare for severe winter weather by stocking up on non-perishable food items, keeping spare batteries on hand, and driving in consideration of the weather conditions. I'd like to welcome two very special guests to the Burning Issue program today. We have Corey Anderson, who is in our administrative offices and is the person who uh, fields the vast majority of our phone calls that come in uh, on our non-emergency line. And also, Firefighter Dustin Nims, who's been with us for about six years and is assigned to Station 8 on the B-Shift. We're going to hear more from Dustin in a little bit, but Corey, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you do up in the fire prevention offices. I know one of the main things is you answer the phone, but you do other things as well. And we'll get to the phone calls in a second. What are some of the other stuff, the other things that you do when you're up there in the fire prevention offices? Um, I schedule a lot of daycare inspections, home mm -hmm. daycare, commercial, uh, restaurant inspections, anybody who needs their business or home business inspected, right. I make sure it's taken care of. You um, also get phone calls for special requests like, hey, we'd like to have the firefighters yeah. come out right. and meet our kids or to right. walk through our business, right? Yes, we get a lot of public education um, requests, which mm -hmm. in, just involves me communicating with the in inquiry mm -hmm. about where they would want the firefighters and apparatus mm -hmm. to come to their events and right. such forth, um, which we're allowed to go to, and a lot of people enjoy it. Oh yeah, they enjoy having Especially our firefighters the kids. come out. So you get a ton of phone calls, and we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the top 10 phone calls that you get, but the first one, probably the most uh, reoccurring phone call that you get is for smoke alarms? Recently. Tell us about that a little bit. Uh, well, we will come out and replace your batteries and your smoke alarms. And if you mm -hmm. have a smoke alarm that is 10 years old or so, we right. try to change that out. Because they go bad after about 10 years. Absolutely. And we need to make sure everyone has this working smoke alarm. Right. Um, so we have a smoke alarm list program. I put you on it. And then our prevention and public education department will call you for scheduling. Right. Um, it takes a few weeks just because, you know, we're taking care of a whole city. We get a lot. We get a lot every yeah. day, every day, you know. And, and the best way, to, if you're wanting just batteries changed out, the best thing to do is to call the day that you're going to be home throughout mm -hmm. the majority of the day. Right. I try to send a crew out there immediately so it's taken care of that day because right. who knows what could happen that night when you're asleep. True. Very true. So the next kind of big phone call thing that you get has to do with burn permits? Yes, we get a lot of those. Yeah, so people want to burn stuff in the city and right. that doesn't usually work out too well for them, but we do try. We try. Tell us a little bit about those phone calls. Um, a lot of those phone calls are either burn permits or they're wanting to just get information on recreational fire pits. Sure. Um, Typically, people don't. People think that you have to have a burn permit for a recreational fire pit, but you do not have to. And I go over the stipulations on that, and then mm -hmm. they're relieved, and then they go and have fun. Right. Uh, so if they have a little chimney in their backyard or a little three-foot fire pit in their backyard, that's okay. Yep, as long as it meets the requirements. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, if it creates a whole bunch of smoke and it's bothering their neighbors, you know, because their neighbors have asthma or they just don't like the odor, we do ask them to, to be cognizant of that. To Absolutely. Be, yeah pay yes. attention to the wind speed absolutely and those kinds of things yep mm -hmm. but if it's a if it's a full-fledged burn permit and they're wanting to pile big piles of wood and tree waste and stuff on the ground they got to get a permit and an inspection by yep. one of our inspectors mm -hmm. right? it has to be approved 
uh, home daycares and commercial daycare inspections, you probably field a phone call or two about those. I get a lot more home daycare inspections and commercials, yeah. um, and I can understand. Um, well, there's hundreds and hundreds. Hundreds of, of home daycares, yeah. um, and, and, and again, they are the probably the one of the highest priorities yeah. that I get. Right. Um, well, they have to be inspected every year. Right. And so we have rechecks and new right. home daycares to take care of. Exactly. Well, I mean, let's face it. There's nothing more important to us than kids. Oh, yes. And kids are in daycares, so those are a high priority inspection mm -hmm. request, and, and people are calling in all the time to get those requests done. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's okay. I mean, they're conscientious about what they're doing. They're trying to be safe, and they want to get those things scheduled up pretty quick. Uh, what about calls for reports? Do we get a few of those? Where oh, yes. copies? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We get, I get, every day when I go check the mail, mm -hmm. it's a new fire report request. Yeah. Um, phone calls, and, and, and Dustin can vouch for this now that he's been up there helping out. Right. Tons of emails, phone calls, requests, mm -hmm. um, and that goes with phase one assessments. Pe people want answers. They want to know this building and, and the history of the building. And sure. even if it happened in 2009, they, they want history and they <laughs> are very adamant about it. Right. So we have, we respond to almost 60,000 calls a year. Mm -hmm. And that's 60,000 opportunities for people to call up and request a copy of their report mm -hmm. because, you know, the insurance company may want it or, you know, somebody associated with the call, an attorney or whatever may want that information. And so we have a pretty robust uh, information system that holds that data. And then, like you said, it could happen back four or five, six years ago and people are just now calling oh, yeah. to request that information. So you get a few of those. Yep. I just made one yesterday for right. 2013. Some of the safety uh, calls that we get, some of the fire safety calls we get, like barbecue grills. Tell us a little bit about why, why do people call and ask you about barbecue grills? You know, and I wish that more people would call mm -hmm. about barbecue grills because if you notice, um, when you're out driving around, there's a lot of people that aren't following the rules and a lot of them are at apartment complexes or townhomes. Right. I, do get a, I do get a few calls uh, from the ones that do want to be safe and, you know, I just, again, I tell them the stipulations, the regulations on barbecue grills. Um, you know, you have the, the charcoal, you have the gas, you have the propane, so each one of those, you have electric now, mm -hmm. each one of those have different rules and regulations that you need to follow. What's kind of the general mm -hmm. rule? If you're going to have a barbecue grill and you live in an apartment complex or you live in a multifamily dwelling, what's the, kind of the general rule? Of general that? rule for all of them is they need to be 15 feet away from right. any structure. Yeah. Um, a lot of people put them on their decks mm -hmm. or their or their wooden balconies that's and a bad deal that's right. that's bad because that's on a structure it's not yeah. 15 feet away we also want to try I get a lot of like group homes or like nursing homes mm -hmm. and they want to put them out in the um, a common area and they can't put them on their patios you we recommend 15 feet away on a slab of concrete if possible sure. Um, but that's the general rule, and then also, you know, you want to keep a maybe like a tan. If you have charcoal, tan cra a trash can next to it, so you can put the coals in there. Um, right. You don't want to throw those away in a plastic dumpster. Right, but metal trash can. You want to yeah. let them sit. Yeah, you want to let them sit. Right. Dustin's going to talk about that a little bit later. We were talking about it yesterday. Letting them sit for four or five days or yes. longer if you can, mm -hmm. because if you put them in your plastic trash can up against your house, you're not going to have a roof later on that night. So. <laughs> Probably not. Another common uh, phone call that we get upstairs is about car seats and, and child safety seats. Tell us a little bit about those kinds of phone calls. We've partnered with Via Christi, and we have a program with. It's called Safe Kids, and people will, can call, and we get them scheduled in with Via Christi Safe Kids, and then they can go and get the correct car seat installed for their children. Um, I highly recommend this nowadays, just because of all the new cars, and mm -hmm. just you want to make sure that your child is in the correct car seat. Um, I, I love that idea, and we actually do provide our fire station, and we partner with them, so they are being taken care of. Yeah, they uh, typically schedule a time where mm -hmm. they come drive through the fire station. Yeah. The folks at Via Christi and Save Kids and our firefighters help them install the car seat properly, show you how to do it. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a good deal. Drive through car seats. Absolutely. Uh, public safety requests. I know we touched on that a little bit, but people call up and want to schedule programs with our firefighters, right? Yes. Um, fire extinguisher training. Um, 
anything from fire drills, if, uh, like I said, group homes or assisted living, anything that holds a large amount of people, mm -hmm. even businesses, you know, if you have like a Home Depot or a Costco, people are wanting to make sure their staff is trained properly on fire extinguishers and fire drills. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I try to get involved with that with the fire de with the fire prevention department and public education and then we will go out there and train them properly right. um so you, you also get calls helpful. where people want our firefighters to either come to their business and do a, uh, give them a tour of their truck or they want to come to the fire station and yes. visit our firefighters in the station mm -hmm. and look at the trucks and talk about some of the yes equipment. and the kids really do enjoy that yeah. we get a lot of calls about station tours um kids want to go out and you know they want to become firefighters and they want to sure. see everything and and then you know we get the um, a lot of daycares and commercial daycares they want to do truck tours which we also do like a puppet show for the kids and I mean they love it and I think it's a great way to implement fire safety yeah. I mean they really do latch on and they understand it and right. they're able to call 911 and they know the stop drop and roll and they, and they know the basics of possibly helping a family well, we certainly appreciate the work that you do. You filled a ton of phone calls. You provide a lot of information to people who are calling up needing to know something and just don't exactly know where to go or what to do. And they usually end up with you on the line and helping them out. We sincerely appreciate all your help. It's so, been fun. Yeah, good. We're, we're glad you're having Thank a you. good time. Stick around for a while. Dustin, we're going to move to you. Dustin, you've been with us for a little over six years now. Yes, sir. You're at Station 8, which is on West Central, kind of near West Side in the what we call the Orchard, right, right there by Central and West Street. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be on the fire department? What, what made you want to become a firefighter? Are you enjoying what you're doing and giving back to the community? Oh, absolutely. Um, like you mentioned, I've been mm -hmm. serving Wichita for six years now, and I just feel blessed to be a part of the Wichita Fire Department. It's awesome. It, it is. It's a job I wake, wake up every morning I look forward to. Good. Um, seeing the people's faces when you come and you yeah. help them, they're, they're so grateful to us, yeah. and the public's always so kind when they see us out and about. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, I knew I wanted to be a firefighter at an early age because I was always drawn to helping people, mm -hmm. and I like the thrill. Yeah, sure. Well, everybody likes the thrill a little bit, but... Uh, this community is really blessed to have you and to have about 440 people like you yeah. that are willing to uh, come to work every day and help people in their greatest time of need. So we want to thank you for your service as well. Well, thank you. Well, let's talk about some of the stuff that you see when you're out there working in the fire station as it, as it pertains to fire causation and especially during the winter months. One of the number one reasons we have fires in Wichita is because of cooking fires. Certainly. Tell us a little bit about cooking fires and how people can prevent those things from happening to them and their family. Well, there are things we can do to mm -hmm. prevent cooking fires. Mm -hmm. um, some of the little things like being aware of combustibles that are around the stovetop. Right. Little things like oven mitts. Paper towels. Paper towels, cooking yeah. utensils. Right. Um, kitchen towels. I cook with kitchen towels all the time. They're sure. always around. Um, and curtains. Sometimes curtains can be too close to the stovetop. So right. just things you need to be aware of. And, and obviously attending to the stove the whole time while you're cooking is kind of important, right? Absolutely. You should remain in the kitchen the whole time while cooking. Mm -hmm. Check your food often so you yeah. don't burn it. Right. And um, you know, if you need to set a timer to allow to to remind you that you have food going that's that's not a bad idea either sure i mean it's easy to get distracted with a phone call or one of the kids is crying in the back room or you hear something outside if you have to leave that stove you really need to turn it down on low or turn it off completely right? absolutely we, yeah. ha we have a lot of cooking fires and uh, like wichita just like the nation the number one reason for fires is cooking fires and they're so so preventable yeah just make sure you stay alert um, if, if you're sleepy or have been consuming alcohol, it's, it's best not to use the stove. Very true. Use that microwave, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, so the second leading cause of fires, not only in our community but national, nationwide, is careless smoking. Talk a little bit about careless smoking and things people can do to avoid being the victim of a fire. Absolutely. Um, you know, family members should encourage safe habits, mm -hmm. especially with, you know, don't smoke in bed. Right. Uh, if you're on oxygen, you shouldn't be smoking right. while on O2. Uh, discard your cigarettes. Make sure they're fully out. Mm -hmm. You know, run them under water. Sure. Use ashtrays. Make right. sure they're fully extinguished before you discard them. Don't.
flick them over a balcony right. into your yard yeah. where there's dead leaves right now. Or put them in a planter. Don't put them the in a flower or. pot that yeah. is smolder and don't don't flick them in a, a flower bed either. Yeah, particularly when it's windy outside too. I mean, it's a bad idea to flick one out anyway, but when it's windy, the wind helps to create the uh, glow of the ember that can lead to leaves and potting soil and stuff getting ignited. Absolutely. Uh, and you also made a good point about uh, smoking on oxygen. You know, people are going to smoke, and, and we understand that, but if you're on oxygen, you need to get that oxygen source as far away from you uh, and your bed or your chair as possible if you're going to have that cigarette. Uh, oxygen actually helps the burning process. And it seems like we make four or five cases a year where somebody's smoking on oxygen and they have sustained a significant burn and many times they, they die from yep. those injuries, from the inhalation injuries, not because they burn up in the fire, but that fireball that happens right here on their chest, they breathe in in a panic and they've seared their, their lungs and that's mm. not, yep. not good at all. All right, third leading cause of fires, at least during the winter time, are heat producing devices like space heaters and fireplaces. Talk a little bit about what folks can do to prevent fires from happening in their homes if they're using those. Absolutely. Well, if you're like me right now, it's my favorite time of year. Mm -hmm. I have a wood burning fireplace and I love to use it. Yeah. But there's things you need to be aware of right. and you should always have a three foot zone mm -hmm. around your fireplace or your wood burning stove, um, as well as space heaters your yep. furnace and hot water heater. Right. Um, if you have an older home and you have the, the floor grates, it, it's the same with that. You know, keep a three foot right. zone around, around those floor grates because they get really hot as well. Um, you you want to keep combustibles away, away from it. And right. When I say combustibles, it's items such as clothing and mm -hmm. trash. Blankets, rugs, rugs yeah. Yeah. chairs, whatever. Yeah. And so uh, you, you mentioned wood burning stoves and I always find this interesting. Uh, people don't always think about uh, coals, uh, whether it's from a wood burning stove or a barbecue grill or a smoker or whatever. Those things stay hot for a while. Absolutely. You don't want to just shovel them out of your fireplace into your uh, dumpster, right? No. How long should we let those things sit around? You should let them set for at least a week. Yeah. I have a cast iron bucket and I clean my coals out and I set them in there and mm -hmm. I set it in the concrete of my garage and I let it set for a week before I discard it into the the trash or out in the yard. Right. So if you uh, take them out when they're a day or two old and you put them in your dumpster and you set them next to your house, you're probably going to be buying a new roof. It's going to sit there and smolder and then it's going to yeah. catch fire and absolutely. Yeah. You guys are going to show up, yeah. copious amounts of water on all your stuff, no roof over your head, living in a hotel for the next six months. Just yeah. make sure those coals are out, right? Let yes. them sit around. And also, you know, never leave a fire burning unattended. Right. Uh, I try to make sure that mine is all the way burnt through and it's just hot coals and I shut the door before I go to bed. Right. Uh, the three foot zone around space heaters and the fireplace, that, that has two purposes, by the way, right? Uh, it's so that we don't catch blankets and chairs and stuff on fire. But talk a little bit about kids and pets being around those devices that get really hot. Yeah, certainly. Uh, little kids, they're, they're just curious, mm -hmm. and they have the potential to get too close and get burnt. Right. I mean, they, they're clumsy. Yeah. I know mine are. Yeah. And they'll trip, and they can then fall and get hurt themselves. So right. you don't want their clothing to catch fire. You don't want their hands to get burned right. or their faces. Absolutely. It's a very traumatic injury, a burn injury. Yes, it is. want to avoid that. All right, let's talk about a few quick uh, winter safety kinds of tips that people can do to keep them and their families safe uh, that, that don't revolve around cooking and smoking and fireplaces. Tell me a little bit about smoke alarms and changing batteries out. Well, it's that time of year where you're starting to kick on the furnaces and mm -hmm. the, the fireplaces. So yeah, you wanna make sure your, your home smoke detectors are currently, batteries are changed, they've been right. tested. Right. You wanna test them monthly. Yep. Uh, and always have fresh batteries on hand. One of the wise things to do when you test them is to make sure you test them when your family's there, right? So yep. that the kids know what they sound like and you have a plan of where to go in the event that they, they get set off, right? Yeah. Because when you show up on the big red fire truck, what's one of the things that you're looking for when you pull up? 
are you are you looking to see if anybody's outside or if there are people still inside? Absolutely, and, that, and it all depends on the time of the day. And yeah. if it's nighttime, you know, we know that people most likely are in there sleeping. Right. So we need to get in there and get those people out as soon as possible. Absolutely. Smoke alarms definitely save lives. Yes, they do. Uh, extension cords is one of the items I was going to talk about. Uh, I understand people are going to use extension cords, and especially right now, coming up on the holiday season with Christmas lights and those kinds of things, it's okay to use extension cords, but don't overuse them. They're designed to be used in a temporary, very temporary way. Uh, they're not designed to run heavy appliances and stuff like that. Uh, overuse of extension cords can cause fires. They break down over time. They can short out. Uh, they can have too much electricity being drawn through them, and uh, we can't always rely upon our breakers to protect our homes. So don't overuse those extension cords. Dustin, tell me a little bit about the use of candles and how people can avoid uh, having a fire situation in their home if they're using candles. Well, it's that holiday time of year, and everybody's burning the scented candles. They right. smell good. Right. Um, just be very careful when burning them. Make sure they're on a flat steady surface mm -hmm. and make sure there's no combustibles around them and again those are like curtains drapes right. paper cloth around it doilies anything that they could be setting right up. yeah um, shouldn't leave them burning unattended right uh, and the biggest thing is always make sure you blow them out before you go to bed absolutely uh, be aware of those kids and pets too like we were talking about the space heaters and burn injuries kids are curious about yeah. fire pets you their know, tails yeah big lovable labrador comes walking <laughs> by and whack with the tail and the next thing you know you've got a mess on your hands um, this isn't really a fire safety tip but wanted to talk a little bit about slip and trip hazards uh, as we get closer to those colder days and we're going to have moisture this year snow ice rain that turns into ice because it gets cold at night uh, be really aware of what your sidewalks look like, your stairs uh, in front of your house or your driveway, uh, walking in and out of work, walking in and out of the mall. We want people to pay attention to the walking conditions because slip and trip and fall hazards are everywhere. And if you fall down, break your leg, break your ankle, break your hip, that's a very traumatic injury. We kind of like to walk around. Long right? recovery. Yeah. <laughs> very long recovery, absolutely. Uh, there's yak tracks and things that you can put on your shoes to help you get traction if you need that. Uh, but be aware of those kinds of things. And also, uh, since I'm talking about trip hazards, if you're using extension cords outside to run your Christmas lights, uh, be aware that those things are trip hazards too. Right? Oh, yeah. For kids, for, for your parents, for your grandparents, for yourself, uh, make sure you put them in, a, in an area where somebody's not going to trip over them. Dustin, I'm going to give you the last word on some driving safety tips for folks who need to be out in the weather driving around if it's snowing or sleeting or we have an ice storm. Yeah, certainly. You need to give yourself plenty of driving time to get to work. If you know it's going to be snowing out or icy, uh, the goal is to arrive alive. So mm -hmm. take your time, drive defensively, and the best option is stay at home if you can. Absolutely. Don't get out if you don't have to. Right. But if you have to, best defensive driving that you, you have and drive nice and slow and give yourself a lot of space and a lot of time. If you need to buy sandbags to weight your truck down, that'll help. Yep, absolutely. If you're not fortunate enough to have four-wheel drive. Right. Not everybody has four-wheel drive. But remember the thing about four-wheel drive, it'll get you going. It doesn't help you stop. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Ice doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't discriminate. So. Well, Dustin, thank you very much for joining us today. Corey, you as well. Uh, appreciate your time, appreciate your service to this community, and appreciate you joining us on Burning Issues. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You. you bet. Remember, if you need a smoke alarm, call us at 268-4441 to schedule a time for a member of our department to come out and install one. If you'd like to become more involved in the city of Wichita, or if you want to learn more about the Wichita Fire Department, you can go to wichita.gov and click on the fire department link. You can check us out on Facebook, or you can call the Wichita Fire Department at 268-4441. You can also now follow us on Twitter. That concludes this episode of Burning Issues. Our mission is to provide our community excellent, proactive fire and life safety services through prevention, education, and protection. Remember, Wichita firefighters are highly trained professionals who are your friends and neighbors. They are Wichita's bravest, and they're somewhere serving you in many ways every day.